Uh, move on to our next question on the forum. Uh, this is from at Anonymous1. Uh, hi, Henry and Jonah. I'd love to get your take on the recent growth in Linux desktop market share and what you think the key dri factors driving it are. Do you see it as being mainly due to the rise of Chrome OS in schools, even if most statistics report them separately, the improvements in Linux gaming, dissatisfaction with Windows 11, or maybe the increased user friendliness of certain distros in desktop environments? Uh, do you think this growth will keep up at its current pace, slow down, or speed up? Do you for example, could the upcoming release of Steam OS for other handhelds significantly boost Linux adoption? So a lot of questions about Linux there. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, so I was actually just looking at the chart. It was a few days ago when I was recording surveillance support with Nate, because this is one of our stories that we covered was Linux getting another all time high. I was looking at the chart and it was really hard to make sense of it because you just there's just these general trends over time and then they'll even reverse after a certain amount of time. So I think it was Windows that was actually gaining a lot of market share and then it's been losing market share. Um, and I think recently, I forgot which one was gaining recently. I forgot if it was Mac OS or Windows, but one of them has been gaining a bit recently. But these things kind of come and go and it's hard to tell if what's happening with Linux is another kind of come and go type of deal or if it's going to just keep increasing and we don't really know where it's gonna stabilize. It's kind of like trying to predict the stock market or something like that. With that said, in terms of mechanisms, I do think, at least speaking with Jonah, he's probably going to talk about how SteamOS has been a big uh, point of adoption for Linux, and that does contribute to the counter quite a bit. Um, I'm sure a lot of the underground feet or the underlying features of Linux that are making it more accessible and more compatible are definitely going to help. I also do think that the dissatisfaction with Windows has to play into it, but I don't know how much because I feel like people are more likely, the average person maybe this is wrong, might be more likely to move to an Apple device if they're unhappy with Windows than Linux, at least by default. I don't think that Linux is like the number one option that a regular consumer is considering. Though definitely within our community and people uh, like on our forum, Linux is definitely like a core alternative to Windows. So I don't know, it's really hard to tell, but I definitely think that we can see it continue to go up and I think it'd be really exciting and I'd love to see that. And I think that the more work that the Linux community is putting into making it usable, the more likely it is that we'll keep seeing an increase. So um, those are kind of all my initial thoughts, but it's hard for me to know. So It's hard to say. I hadn't heard the news about uh, SteamOS coming to the ROG Ally and other devices. That's pretty cool. Um, so that will probably increase adoption. But yeah, I, I would say part of it is probably, I think Chrome OS has actually been declining lately. So I don't think that that is probably related, even though they're reported separately. I don't think that we will see like huge growth in Linux ever until um, like more hardware comes with Linux pre-installed. Like the Steam Deck, for example, um, has Linux pre-installed and you see a huge jump in the amount of Linux users that are using Steam, for example. But gaming is like, it's a very niche sector of the computer buying market and there really aren't like a lot of Linux options when you're going to Best Buy or whatever and picking up a computer. And that's really like the number one thing that will drive adoption of whatever OS. It's just whatever's in front of you because people aren't going to reinstall their OS on their computer ever. And that's just how it is. I think if that changed, you would see a lot more Linux users because people, I think that the experience is probably perfectly fine for most people. It's certainly, um, at least as good as a Chromebook, I think, in a lot of cases. And people buy Chromebooks all the time just because they're readily available devices. So uh, if something like that happened, it could increase it. But other than that, um, I think like in the very long term, it's probably inevitable that Linux will take over. I'm pretty confident about Linux becoming dominant over time, but it could be like <laughs> over 10 years, over <laughs> like a really long time. It's kind of like... Um, kind of like IPv6 adoption on the internet versus IPv4. People have been saying like, it's gonna be the next big thing forever and everyone's gonna have to switch to it because the alternatives are just so bad, but uh, nobody, nobody's gonna switch until they're like absolutely forced to, um, I don't think so. It'll just be a while. Yeah, one trend I've seen that you bring up with, I really like your Chromebook comparison because people say it's really hard to switch to Linux. And I do agree if it's, um, like your main daily driver, but people don't have an issue buying a Chromebook that literally is just a web browser. Um, yeah. But I think it speaks to, I, I think to kind of combine your point, it speaks to how people want to buy into some kind of package. Um, when you buy a Chromebook, yeah, it's just a browser, but you're buying into this Google ecosystem. So the Google ecosystem is what makes a Chromebook a Chromebook, I feel. Um, and on Linux, 
there is no ecosystem. Even if you bought like a, let's say Dell, I think Dell has shipped actually a few Linux only devices, but kind of on a small scale. But let's say that they released their main laptop and it just shipped with Linux by default. I still think people would struggle with it because it's not like a, an ecosystem they're familiar with, nor does Linux really come with an ecosystem. Yeah, you can sign in with Google, and I know some of them do include that kind of stuff, but it's just not quite the same. So I think the kind of the pro and con to Linux, and obviously we all love Linux because it doesn't really have an ecosystem and it's very open-ended and it gives you options and choice. I almost feel like that works against it for the average consumer. So I think that's why the SteamOS is so successful as well, because it kind of adds that ecosystem and suite functionality to Linux in a way. Um, just a thought, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If I think that's that. absolutely true. Um, th this is one of the things that, one of the many things on <laughs> the list of frustrations I have with Mozilla, um, which is that I think that they are in a prime position to do exactly this. Because Mozilla, realistically, all they have to do to make a Chromebook competitor is have Ubuntu or whatever Linux distro they want pre-installed on some hardware and pin Firefox to the dock and just say, hey, Firefox computer, it's a web browser, you can do whatever you want. And then people might happen to do other things on Linux, people might not and just use Firefox, but that would be functionally equivalent to most Chromebooks, um, except without like the reliance on Google's cloud and Chrome browser. And um, and they are in a position where they could get a product like that to, out to market, but they, uh, I mean, they were working on Firefox OS like probably over a decade ago now, I'm not sure. And they, that never took off because they mm. abandoned all that stuff like that. But it, it really wouldn't be that hard, I think, for them to, um, I mean, it'd be challenging. They'd have to find like hardware partners and stuff. But I think that they are in probably the best position to create like a Chromebook competitor based on Linux instead of like a custom Chrome OS that Google developed, that kind of thing. Yeah. But you know, it's Mozilla. <laughs> Yeah, fire, fire book would be <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that would be like Amazon, though. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is, that's a good point. Thanks for watching this Techler clip. This is actually a clipped version of a full-length video that talks about this topic a lot more thoroughly. So if you want to check out a lot more digital rights content, check out the main Techler channel, and we'll see you over there.